Today's video, we're going to be learning how to design a solar power system for maximum efficiency. And we're going to calculate all of the potential losses from buying cheap components, from having bad wire gauge, and also like using induction loads on a modified sine wave inverter. All of these things can lead to huge losses in your system. And you want to be able to extract as much power as you can from the sun with your solar panels. And you want to be able to store it efficiently. And you want to be able to convert the power throughout the system so that there's no losses. And I found a lot of people that use cheap components that are made from China will have such huge losses on their system that the whole system is compromised and they're not producing nearly as much power as they really could. So in today's video, we're going to be designing three different systems. We're going to be designing a badly designed system with huge losses. We're going to be designing a good system with basic parts that everybody usually uses. And then we're going to be talking about how to maximize efficiency in a really, really good system. And we are going to calculate the losses for each system. And I think this will help a lot of you guys when designing your own system, because you will find out that if there is a single bottleneck, Anywhere in our system, it will hurt the whole system. And even if you buy a cheap solar charge controller, but you have a good battery and a good inverter, it will not matter. It's choking the entire system. So I think this will really help you guys. So now this is our first example system. And before we calculate, I'm gonna go over all of these losses. So first we have 100 watts in green that the solar panel is producing. And then we're gonna have three wire loss situations. These are DC wires and they are low voltage and a lot of people do not gauge them properly. So instead of a one to 3% loss, which that's the losses that you should have usually in a good system, we're gonna say that they have a 5%, but this can go up astronomically depending on how badly designed the system is. But for most people, they might be off by just a little bit. So let's just say that it's 5% if they don't know what they're doing. So going from the solar panel to the solar charge controller, we're gonna have a wire loss of 5%. And then solar charge controller, let's use the cheapest one possible, a pulse width modulation controller. And we're going to have a 30% loss automatically. Next, going from the solar charge controller to the battery, we're gonna have another 5% loss because people do not like to size these accordingly. And if the input terminal on the solar charge controller is not large enough, people like to use smaller wires. And I've seen that all the time. They'll use like the same size wires as a solar panel. And that's not what you're supposed to do. It's a different voltage. Next, the battery. If we buy some cheap Trojan six volt batteries or the Costco um, golf cart batteries, we're going to incur a Faradaic efficiency loss of 20%. So the power going in and the power going out, you lose 20%. And this can be higher. So if you're using a floated battery and you are just topping it up all the time, the loss will be 55%. But for this example, let's say that you are deeply discharging every day and the resistance is low when it is charging during the day. And let's just say that there's a 20% loss. Next, another 5% loss to the inverter because people do not like to have the proper connection terminals and they do not use the proper gauge wire. They might just use four gauge wire for a 2000 watt inverter. So let's say another 5% loss and then let's use a modified sine wave inverter that's cheap from China and it will have a 15% loss automatically just because it's an inverter anyways. But if you're running an induction load such as a fan through the inverter, you're going to have another 30% loss. Modified sine wave inverters, especially the cheap ones, do not like powering induction loads and they heat up and there's lots of other losses. So all of these losses will tell us how much power we get out of that 100 watts. So we're gonna take that 100 watts and calculate 5% loss, 30% loss, 5% loss, 20% loss, 5% loss, all the way throughout the steps and we will figure out how much of that 100 watts we actually get to use. All right guys, I calculated all the numbers. If we have a wire loss of 5% between the solar panel and the controller, you're down to 95 watts of potential power at that moment. Then the solar charge controller, we have a 30% loss of so 66.5 watts, and then wire loss 63, and then battery, we get a 20% loss, so now we're down to 50 watts, and then the wire loss of 5% down to 48 watts, and then we get the modified sine wave inverter from China, 15% loss, 40. So what we get in the end of the day after we store it and after we do all of these conversion processes is 40.84 watts coming out of the inverter okay if you run an induction load through this inverter you're going to incur another 30 percent and that will give you a power of 28.59 watts so 100 watts goes in 
about 40 watts goes out. And this is a pretty common system. I've seen tons of people use the Costco batteries, use a pulse width modulation controller, mess up their wires a little bit. I've seen it on all sorts of YouTube channels for the van life community. And then they have a cheap Chinese modified sine wave inverter. So this is how much power you're actually producing in a badly designed system. 100 watts goes in, 40 watts goes out. And also if you have a 100 watt solar panel, it's not producing 100 watts. It's usually producing around 70 watts. So now that we know a badly designed system, we are going to design a good system. And I'm gonna show you step by step how different the losses are. And this is a well-designed system. So we are going to have a wire loss of only 2% because we're using the right gauge wire. Then we're gonna use an MPPT solar charge controller. So instead of 30% loss, you only have a 2% loss. And then the battery, we're gonna use a sealed lead acid or a valve regulated recombinant system. And that's, you know, common. And that's the only lead acid that I sell on my website. That's gonna have only a 5% loss. And then for the inverter, we're gonna use a pure sine wave inverter and that's only 10% loss. And then 2% and 2% wire loss. So let's calculate this out and see how much better this is. Now we calculated it. So we have 100 watts in, wire loss drops it to 98, solar charge controller drops it to 96 watts, wire loss 94, SLA battery 89, and then 87 watts, 78 after it comes out of the inverter. And we don't have that 30% loss for induction loads. So 100 watts goes in and almost 80% comes out. Okay, do you see that? That is huge. That is amazing. You use the right components and the right wire and you are getting so much power out of your system. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm using cheaper components, so the whole system's cheaper. Yes, but if you use the right components, it's actually cheaper because you're producing so much more power for the price. So it actually saves yourself a lot of money to design a good system in the end because it produces so much more power. So now that we know a good design system, now we're gonna be able to make the best possible system with a lithium battery, proper gauge wires, so there's practically no loss. And so yeah, let's calculate that out real quick. So this is gonna be the best system. This is best circumstances with the proper components. So I'm not even gonna calculate wire loss because it's less than 1%. It's probably less than half of a percent. And then we also have an MPPT, 2% loss. The battery is gonna be a lithium. And I'm gonna say iron phosphate. So it's gonna be only a 1% loss. And the inverter is gonna be a pure sine wave and it's still gonna incur the 10% loss. So let's calculate this out. And now I just calculated out this system. So we have 100 watts in, we have 2% loss brings it to 98, 1% loss with lithium battery brings it to 97.02, and the inverter losses of 10% is gonna be 87.3. Look at that, that is incredible. That is so crazy. If you use the right system components and you over gauge your system wires so there are the least amount of losses possible, you really produce a lot more power. That's incredible. So keep this in mind when you guys are designing your system. This is a basic thing that everybody designing a solar power system should understand. Use the good components. And one more thing that I want to say though, is that if there is a bottleneck situation, let's say that the wire gauge is bad up here at the solar panels, it's going to mean less power for every step of the process and you will have huge losses. So there are many, many potential bottlenecks such as a bad connector going between the solar panel and the solar charge controller, such as one bad ground between the solar charge controller and the battery. So you need to make sure that everything is working together in these kinds of systems. And if you guys have any questions on how to wire this stuff up, check out my book. I also have a whole website with pre-calculated modular systems. So if you want to build one from scratch, it's very simple to do. The book will show you step by step how to do it. And right now it's been bestseller number one and number two in solar energy and electrical home improvement for like a couple weeks now. And I hope you guys found this video useful. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Let me know if you have any questions below and I'll see you later. Bye.